Alrighty guys, we're back for Mini Reanimator, and this is a Lost Caverns of Ixalan Standard Brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked. We're rocking cards like Helping Hand in here, all four of them. This is a one mana sorcery speed return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield apt. Interesting. So we have a whole bunch of terrific three mana creatures that we really don't mind cheating out with helping hand, right? Which reminds me, guys, this was a suggestion over in the Discord. So thank you so much for the suggestion. It's definitely going to be a neat one to say the least. Check out these three mana cards. We got four Monastery Mentors. This is a three mana, two, two, rock and prowess. And whenever you cast a non creature spell, which is most of the deck, I'll create a one, one white monk creature token with prowess as well so this is obviously one of our main win conditions uh same thing with haughty gin dude have you guys seen this card before no <laughs> uh obviously we've seen it but it's so key to the deck that i actually am going to go over it just briefly here three mana and its power is equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard which this deck is going to be packing them full of instants and sorceries of course instant and sorcery spells you ca uh, cast cost one less to cast as well it's got that terrific four toughness that's very hard to get around most of the time and it just flies in wins the games all the time for tempo players for mono blue players terrific piece man we also have another three drop in here, a couple Halo Foragers. This is the three mana, three one with flying, and whenever Halo Forager enters the battlefield, you can pay X. When you do, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with mana value X from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. So unfortunately, yeah, you are picking like instant or sorceries out of the grave and making your hottie gin a little bit weaker. But overall, just being able to recast stuff off of the Halo Forager is actually pretty sick, right? Because what ends up happening is if you have like three mana and you go like helping hand onto the Halo Forager, you know, that ability is when it's ETBs, not when you cast it. So when it ETBs and you still got a couple extra mana left over, uh, thanks to the helping hand, and then just like recast some removal out of the grave or something. That's actually really sick, huh? So we have other ways to reanimate these powerful uh, three mana cards like recommission here. It's a two mana sorcery speed, return target artifact or creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If it was a creature, then it gets a plus one plus one counter too. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. If you already have like a hottie gin on the board, then of course all of these uh, two mana instants and sorceries are all of a sudden just one mana. So... You can really just start spamming things out. Uh, honestly, it should be right up my alley because it's kind of like a spell slinger deck. And I love spell slinger style decks. So uh, this is going to be really neat, I think. We have uh, a little bit of card draw here with chart of course. It's a two mana sorcery speed. Draw two cards, then discard a card unless you attack this turn. And I got to be real with you guys. I like attacking on my turns. So <laughs> just like two mana draw two. I like that. Sorcery speed might slow it down a little bit, but then also if we ever do have to actually discard, then it's totally fine to discard some of our creatures that we eventually want to reanimate anyways. That's the same concept with cards like Bitter Triumph here. So as an additional cost to cast a spell, discard a card or a three life. Totally fine. Discard one of those creatures, bring it back eventually with Helping Hand or something, you know? Then destroy target creature or planeswalker. Hitting planeswalkers is pretty key here. Now every now and then you might not have something to discard. Or you might really not be able to pay the three. But I do have a one of go for the throat in here too. Uh, you know, it's just, it's one of those pieces of removal. It's nice, it's clean. Uh, every now and then there's going to be an artifact that you're like, oh crap, my go for the throat doesn't hit that artifact. But guess what? We still have those two bitter triumphs in here too. So hopefully we'll be fine overall. Might as well finish going over the rest of the two mana cards, too. We have some more creatures in here. Picklock Prankster has that adventure side at instant speed. It's called Free the Fey. For one and a blue, you mill four cards, then put an instant sorcery or fairy card from among the milled cards into your hand. So it in and of itself is a fairy, of course, but also Halo Forager is a fairy rogue. So yeah, nice. Pretty cool. I bet more often than not, though, you're going to be grabbing an instant or sorcery off of that ability. And then, of course, the creature side of this is a flying Vigilant 1-3. Not too bad. It really isn't. It helps you fly in. Might help you poke the last couple points of damage through. You never know. 
I got some moment of truths in here as well. This is a two mana instant speed. You look at the top three cards of your library. You put one of them into your hand, one of them into the grave, and then one on the bottom of the, your library. So more ways to stock up the grave, grab what you need. I like moment of truth. Really neat card. Got Meltem, Alluring Scoundrel. More ways to stock up the grave, but it's also just a creature. I like that it has flash. Eventually, if you get a lot of chorus counter, four or more chorus counters on it, you may cast the discarded card without paying its mana cost to. We're not really looking at that ability though. Uh, realistically, we're looking at this to filter cards into our grave and then also just like be a valuable flyer as well. Okay, guys, is that all the two mana cards? Onwards to the one mana cards. We have four considers. Yep. <laughs> Surveil is going to be good. Drawing a card is going to be good. Just like spamming instants out of our hand is going to be good as well. So a little bit of protection here with Shore Up. What I like about Shore Up in this is the untap it ability. So target creature you control gets plus one plus one and gains hexproof. So that's the uh, protection, right? The opponent tries their dandiest to drop the go for the throat on the hottie gin. Give it hexproof and then it says untap it so what i like about that of course is if you have helping hand bring something out it comes out tapped unfortunately does recommission say tapped too return target artifact or creature card manifestly three or less uh no it actually just it just recommission just brings it on back that's actually pretty sick anyways though <laughs> helping hand brings it back tapped so you never know if there's going to be like a swing from an opponent they're like oh yeah i got lethal on the board full swing and then you go shore up onto the creature that you brought back untap it and then just uh, block that way as well so i like shore up it's actually a really neat card that we never get to see We've got four sleight of hands in here too this is a one mana sorcery speed unfortunately but look at the top two cards of your library put one of them into your hand and the other on the bottom of your library just more just again we're just doing our dandies to spam out as many of these instants and sorceries on our turn as possible we're stocking up our grave with them but then also as we're spamming them we're hoping to get like buffs or extra monks off the mentor and stuff like that so yeah like i said it's kind of a spell slinger deck which i really like a couple duress too actually been seeing a huge uptick in the number of duress being played by our opponents and i can see why there's so much that we want to take out of the opponent's hand it's probably not going to miss like the decks that i can imagine duress misses in is like up against mono white humans or uh of course azora soldiers it might miss but even in those builds there's some targets that duress could hit you know get that wandering emperor out of the opponent's hand get that sunfall out of there dude you know what i mean all of that on, packed onto just another one mana sorcery that's pairing well with everything else. Good stuff, dude. Okay, one of the biggest changes that I made to the list from the Discord suggestion was actually the mana base. I believe the mana base in the Discord suggestion had like all the pain lands. I dropped a lot of the pain lands. We are like significantly leaning towards blue in the deck. So I significantly leaned the uh, entire mana base towards blue as well. We, of course, have Soaring City, Abandoned Mire, and Seat of the Empire packed in here as well. But again, yeah, I only opted for four of the pain lands instead of all the pain lands. Instead, we're just going, making sure that we have the early blue sources necessary to play cards like Consider in Sight of Hand and then Mana Fix that way as well. Also have Restless Anchorage because the Restless Lands have been going a long way. The map tokens could go a long way in here too because like in exploring in general and stocking up our grave that way could be really cool. And then Restless Reef also kind of works because you can always mill yourself off the reef, even though this is a ton of mana to actually power up and swing with. 20 land might be perfect for the list, but we'll see. Also have a Rafine's Tower because mana fixing is super important. Look at this lonely little island too. <laughs> Honorable mentions, guys. Uh, some other cards that made the cut in the actual um, suggestion over in the Discord was Otherworldly Gaze actually really like that but I, I wanted to pack some of my own cards in here too uh shore up being the main one that i traded otherworldly gaze out for uh cut down was in that list as well i think we'll be fine on removal we'll see we'll see i thought about curate instead of moment of truth i think moment of truth is going to be a little bit better because it lets us see a little bit more but the surveil too could also pack our grave a little bit more than moment of truth so honorable mention for a reason right this uh archaeologist made the cut on the discord deck as well but not in my list i wanted malcolm instead i think this is a really cool pick though the mill three right out the gate on this card is um yeah actually could go a really long way huh also thought about dispersal i like this card a lot 
Maybe we want like a one of on the top end or something, but eh, we'll talk more about that in the final thoughts if it comes down to it. Okay, guys, hopefully I went over the deck well enough. Oh, buddy, a lot of stuff uh, packed in here that I don't get to play with very often. So I'm very excited. Let's go ahead, take it into some ranked and see how we do. All right, we'll see if we can get right into that first game here. In the meantime, what am I expecting from the build? <laughs> it looks so cool, man. I'm expecting a little bit, actually. I think tempo in general, like, we we, we tend to do pretty well with tempo overall. I uh, got some slow lands, but at least we have the mana that we need. So, like, the mana fixing's fine. But a hand could help us find more if we need. I think this hand's fine, right? It's just the slow lands holding us up just a just a little bit. When it goes first, hey, sleight of hand. Hey, what, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Soaring city, okay. Hmm. I suppose we just we just get the mana down that's uh, gonna come out tapped regardless. That's better than Soaring City sleight of hand, right? Because if we go Soaring City sleight of hand, find more untapped land. Like, at some point, we just don't want too much of the untapped land anyways. All right, side of hand. Look at the top two. And it's going to be Restless Reef for the turn, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, with the helping hands in hand. Oh, they might counter this. They go for the counter, actually. I guess they figure, like... What if we missed our second land or something, right? Like, <laughs> like stop that now. That way they don't fix anything else in their hand. Or that could be a sign of double negate in hand too. And they're just like, well, I suppose this is worthwhile. Wow, they tap down for their hottie gen, guys. That means go for the throat for the turn. Oh, this is, this is, this is a key example as to why we have the other removal in here too. Because we could have discarded the gin to the other piece of removal, the Bitter Triumph or whatever it's called, and then immediately brought it back with Helping Hand too, so definitely something to consider. We're going to do this before they untap, for sure. And I'm getting the Soaring City down just to set up for more mana if we do see more mana off the top. Since Hottie Jin isn't getting to the graveyard anytime soon, if we see more mana off the top, then it wouldn't be a terrible thing do two things next turn like prankster and malcolm or even if we don't see mana off the top prankster's mill could find a creature in the grave consider consider also the risk with the hottie gin might have meant that they had a second hottie gin in hand already counter spell likely open i doubt they would counter the consider let's see if the prankster gets the mill off because if they do and we hit a creature, then Helping Hand might be great for the turn. All right, the mill has happened. Mentor hits the grave, guys. Another prankster. Uh, shore up is good protection. Recommission to hand two, though. I'm going to grab the recommission, actually. <laughs> Even though we have three things. <laughs> We're going to try helping hand number one. And like the reasoning behind all that, of course, is if they counter two of these in a row, then at the very least, we'll have another way to reanimate. And doing all of that in our first game of the evening is awesome, dude. Mentor hits the table. Let's see if they bounce it to hand. This could be a wild game, dude. This could be a wild back and forth. Yeah, that was a that was a tough decision to see what we brought back there. Consider number three from the opponent. Impulses to the grave. Okay, dude. Fifth mana from the opponent too. Light a hand. <laughs> well, they're searching, man. They're 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 digging. That's really funny. Hey, terror hits the board. That is truly terrifying. Hmm. 
I'm thinking about that Melka. We got to start filtering some of this into the grave, huh? I don't really want to bring the prankster back. I'm going to start with the consider and see what we see. Z-Chrome Coast. And I'll send it. I don't think we need that. It's going to come out tapped, too. I think we can survive with just the two for now. Oh, we saw some land anyways. It's not bad. We don't have, like, double white or anything, though, so... Okay. Is it going to be Malcolm? Flash that down on their turn and start discarding? Or do we just want to continuously... All right, I talked myself into this. Let's see if they go for a counter spell here. Wow. See, uh, Prankster in the air as well. Mentor not getting past a 5-5, unfortunately, but going wide against Mono Blue is huge. I know I always bring that up, but it really is. It's great. Flow of Knowledge. Restock that hand. Probably... <laughs> I can only imagine a Fading Hope is chilling in their hand now, right? I can only imagine. They've officially drawn seven extra cards, yet Fading Hope brings that Mentor back. And they have a good swing here, but then they don't know if we're going to have enough power on the board with the Prowess, so... Right. I suppose... Since we're having trouble getting stuff into the grave, it would make a lot of sense just to uh, wait on that Malcolm. Actually, while they're tapped out, we probably just want to get everything down right now. Right? Without protection for the djinn. Actually, I, I think I'm going to go wide here. Let's start with the swing. Let's get the other prankster down and then wait on Malcolm. Now nah, we should play it. There's nothing... Like, if we had something else in hand to hold open, we should play it while they're tapped, though. After all that draw... After all that draw power, dude, yeah. And just getting, like, more flyers in the air, too. Pretty good. Some tough decision so far, but it's playing out, like, exactly as you'd imagine it to play out, I would say. <laughs> Error number two. I have a... I have... A suspicion that these monks are going to have a hard time swinging in. Yeah, dude. Malcolm needs to start filtering out our hand. Oh, crap. Fading hope number two on the Malcolm. We're going to have to start chumping on the ground if they start swinging. So, honestly, I hope they don't swing. Nice. <laughs> Recommission's good, but again, we're struggling to put things into the grave. So... It's probably going to be if they counter Mentor. Is it? When, when is it going to be Hadi Jin? When do we want Hadi Jin on this board instead? I guess with these terrors, I guess now, right? But Mentor getting some more chump blockers down. Oh, tough decisions, tough decisions. Let's swing for three. Vigilance is key. Mm -hmm. All right. Adi Jin number one, and then Malcolm is open. Essence scattered. Is it going to be recommissioned for the turn? I, I suppose. Malcolm. If they end up countering this, recommission uh, gives it a counter too. They still have two cards in hand, guys, so... So it, was, it was either this or attempt the Malcolm. Okay. They have 32 cards remaining, guys. They've drawn eight more cards than us. That's wild. <laughs> Fading hope on the prankster. <laughs> I tell you what, if they start swinging with these terrors, like, we're gonna have to chump. They do start swinging with these. With all these creatures in hand. One, two... Let's go one turn without... Actually, I'll chump one. Since the prankster's not getting buffed from anything we see anyways, it's it's really... Oh! That's pretty good. Five mana for Halo Forager. Go recommission, bring back the Hadi Jin. That's pretty good. 
I like that. Let's do it. They, they're out of cards in hand, too. So uh, take action. X is two. Auto pay. We get to keep a bunch of... Recommission. We get to keep a bunch of cards in hand, too. So, like, this is just so much value. And we're going to go for the swing and hope that we have enough on this board. Uh, if they see, like, third fading hope or something. Oh, hottie gin of their own. Nice, dude. Oh, it's... <laughs> their hottie gin is much more dangerous than our hottie gin. Oh, buddy. Full swing next turn probably doesn't do it for us, man. And helping hand will bring back the gin um, tapped. No blocks. No blocks. We're going to risk it. Down to five. This is anyone's game, dude. Meyer. All right. Let's see what we see on the free the fey and then consider. Well, let's see what we can bring back with helping hand, too. Oh, we only hit a duress out of that, guys. Oh, that was really bad, actually. Oh, yeah. We just hit a bunch of land. Oh, that was that was really, really bad. Based on what we hit there, more blockers in the sky could be good. Setting up Mentor on the ground again could be good. Let's see if they end up trading. I could have milled with the Abandoned Mire. They, they take that gladly. We have a blocker in the sky. Well, they might not take it gladly. We have two cards that they don't know about, which could be mill. We we could go for it, man. We could try to get four through on the hottie gen. Yeah, they know we have Malcolm too. Down to four. Wait a minute. Did I just miss lethal? No, no, no. No, I didn't because they could have blocked. That's right. That's right. That <laughs> I got really concerned for a second, dude. Oh my goodness. That's funny. Okay, and we could get the other hottie gin down too. We just got to make sure we chump enough here. I'm going to say like Malcolm could be fun. They didn't know we had the other uh, hottie gin either in hand, right? I don't think they saw that one. Wow, another hottie gin off the top. Dude. Yeah, we're see, we're forced to block the terror. See, they're at four now, so... Would we have still preferred that full swing and then got chump blockers down for terror? Probably not, because if they found, like, another fading hope or something. We are forced to block here. We, But we, we can just chump instead, because now they don't have enough blockers in air. They only have one blocker in the air, no cards in hand, so it's, it's, just, a, it's just a full swing. Yeah, just a full swing. We got there, guys. No cards in hand from the opponent. They can only block one hottie gin. Um, okay, some things to think about playing out, though. Uh, first of all, like, we didn't have to attack on the ground. So if there were cards in hand, we would have done our dandiest to... Okay, there we go, there we go. Anyways, let, let me talk through that real quick here. That was sick, first of all. Holy cow. Uh, view Battlefield, right? So, a few things. Like, we could have powered up Restless Reef, swung, milled ourselves, buffed these gins further. That's one thing, right? Uh, we didn't have six mana total, so we also could have just played Duress just for funsies, buffed the gins that way. Uh, outside of that, I don't think we would have done that. It, like, like I said, if they had cards in hand, we still would have played it out to our fullest. Or if they were about to survive the turn, too. So if, like, they traded into Jin, keeping the helping hand open, bring that Jin back, it does come back tapped. So, nice, dude. Yeah, I actually really love that the recommissions don't bring those back tapped. It's actually really good. Good stuff, man. At some point, I feel like, even, like we did really well, but I still feel like I missed some optimization somewhere in that one. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we could have done even better overall. 
Uh, the opponent's counter spells hit their mark quite nicely. The fading hopes were good, slowed us down a lot. We did have trouble putting creatures into the grave to reanimate, but overall our reanimation still hit really well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hard draw on chart, of course. I suppose we give this a shot. The opponent goes first, unfortunately, but is this that bad? No. I don't think so. I think this is decent. It might be bad. Um, With the mana we have in hand, I'm going to wait on the Rafine's Tower and go right into our duress. See what's in the opponent's hand here. Oh, wedding announcement. Great hit from soldiers. Terrifying hand. Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh, no, dude. <laughs> Gonna be right into the Harbin, probably. At that point, we don't have any of our reanimation or reanimation targets. They go for the swing. No Harbin? They're thinking about it for some reason. There's the Harbin. Okay, I was trying to figure that one out. <laughs> like, what's happening? Harbin, for sure. Bitter Triumph. How often does Azor's soldiers run counter spells? Do we just do the triumph on our turn? Get, get that Harbin out of here? No. Well, there's nothing else to... Okay. I'll take care of Harbin. And I will discard a card. And it's just gonna be the Sea Chrome Coast. Because I'm thinking Rafine's Tower for next turn and then keeping Soaring City as um, utility right so it's better than taking three against soldiers for sure and this was a perfect example hand as to why i still have that one go for the throat instead of just the third bitter triumph even though the third bitter triumph would have been much better last game Ooh, invasion of gabacon dude nice hitting one of the charter cores that could be really bad for us slide a hand okay how do we want to do this man start with slide a hand see what we see Recommission. Without any creatures to hit, we could at the very least play the Dark Slick Shores this turn and then play Chart a Course. But I think we're just going to go Recommission, Soaring City, Chart a Course. Grab a creature, send it to the grave. <laughs> oh, duress. Oh. We want to keep that to take care of their second wedding announcement, right? They're about to flip the invasion of Gabacon. Tick lock. Prankster. Okay, it's Rafine's tower then, huh? I like everything else in this hand. There's some decisions in this one, man. Some decisions to play through, and this very well could have been a mulligan hand too, right? Pretty slow overall. We're up against Mono Red. That was our turn three, dude, so we'd already be super sweating. Flip the invasion, buff that officer up. And that's also acting as protection for their creatures too. With two mana open, I can imagine... Okay, they're keeping the two mana open, so it might be one of their flash creatures or something, right? Dark Slick Shores. I suppose we start with the rest to see what's in hand just in case there's like a counter spell if not getting rid of that second wedding announcement's really good dude really good before they got that third mana taken care of. wow knight errant they actually didn't play the oh 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 flash on the sentinel cool all right nice so they plan on flashing that in prankster's not going to be able to block here soon enough with all these buffing creatures i suppose we go mill which is actually instant speed, so we can just keep that open since we're going to be tapped out. There's a large variety in this build between sorcery speed things and instant speed things, so that's something to get used to for sure. Seeing some of our top end is going to be ideal. Hopefully, with the mill off the prankster, we get some of that chunky top end into the grave. <laughs> Uh, if we don't, we're probably going to be in some big trouble here. Uh, soldiers already looking like they're in a little bit of trouble not seeing their third mana. Uh, duress really hitting their mark, dude. Yeah, you can't ask for a better result from duress against soldiers. You know what I mean? Yep. 
Sentinel comes down. Mana off the top might mean a Knight Errant of Eos for the turn. Restock their hand with a couple two drops or something. No mana. Go for the swing. Mm -hmm. Taking the five. We are in trouble. They're all going to buff from the Light Shield Array. <laughs> this is scary business, dude. Let's go ahead. Free the Fae. See what we hit in that grave. It is being held up here. Is it? Is it actually going to be like a counter spell or something? That would be really bad. Oh, <gasps> they saw a make disappear off the top, guys. Oh, we're in big trouble, dude. We're in big trouble. <laughs> that was really, really bad. So yeah, on the rare occasion that Azura Sol Soldiers actually runs counter spells, maybe we should have just milled on our turn, dude. I'm going to keep the second white source on the wastes because you never know when that'll come in handy and actually just ditch the island here. The other prankster is good, but uh, we're we're in serious trouble, man. <laughs> uh, had I known, we would have done our dandiest to play around the counter spells, but it is rare. Uh, I We usually see in soldiers the counter spell that counters based on how many creatures you have on the board but i should have played around it anyways because this is already a little bit of a different soldier build with this light shield array that we don't usually see in there either so yeah dude and honestly the wedding announcements too play a hand <laughs> brutal that counter spell was so brutal man i don't know what it actually like yeah if we would have milled i suppose Oh, we might as well grab the untapped source, right? Yeah, this this one, this one's heavily leaning towards the opponent. I honestly, I don't know what we could see, but we needed to see it uh, three turns ago at this point. Oh, mentor might get enough chump blockers on the ground if I grab the sleight of hand to play this turn too, right? So we get underground river down recommission the mentor yeah oh buddy oh we we had a chance we did like we have our chump blockers on the ground but uh the sentinel in the air they still have a way to restock their hand next turn if they want to wait the turn which they might as well wait the uh long game out here Glock. Prankster might be the choice over the consider just based on how much mana we have. Milling more, potentially grabbing more ways to bring cards back from the grave too. Uh, Light Shield Array. Oh, buddy, that's so good. Uh, like as soon as we find removal or the Sentinel, they pop the Light Shield Array, give everything hexproof indestructible. And so like we, we die either way. So yeah, honestly though, so probably start with the mulligan on a hand that looks that slow. Make sure we play around potential counter spells. <laughs> I was, I was still a really good top deck from the opponent though too, so. I'd say they have a terrific full swing here. Four in the air regardless, we chump the five four, we block the officer. So we're losing creatures then. And then next turn they fly in the air, even if we see a counter spell. We would need to see two counter not ca not counter spells. <laughs> I meant I meant removal. Counter spells are on my mind, man. This <laughs> this make disappear is something else. <laughs> yeah, we would need to double down on removal to get that sentinel out of the air. Uh also, like the it, like, yeah, this two mana, they have two unknown cards here in hand. They decide we'll just swing in air. We don't need to full swing. But letting us keep cards on the ground too. Oh, Harbin. More air power too. Light Shield Array buffs the Sentinel. Restless Anchorage does nothing. We'll keep it in hand in case we have to discard it to an effect though. Because we might see something off of the Picklock Prankster. Uh, I think it's the Light Shield Array that's holding us up there. Uh, Halo Forager. 
Gee, if that was an untapped land in our hand, we could totally bring something back. But it's, it's probably just a moment of truth instead, right? We still have two mana available. Going nice and wide with this mentor. Ooh. That's that's bad, dude. Well, I'll put one into the hand. Banded Mire, right? <laughs> One into the grave, it doesn't matter. And then one into the deck. Is that it? Did we already... We fizzled out. That's it. We don't even have the Abandoned Mire ability. We do have a blocker in the air now, but the double, like, um... The double air power is an... Oh, wait. Wait a minute, guys. Did I have enough mana open this game? to play both pranksters and block in the air. Oh, but I wouldn't have, wait. I think I just missed out. I think I did. I missed out on blocks in the air. Now we would have had to chump twice. How much mana did I have open there, guys? I think I made an oopsie daisy. I think we could have survived this turn. Even so, even if we would have survived, we would have been getting a little uh, lucky here, unfortunately. And um, because we might as well swing with this and see if they trade with the officers. Because <laughs> we're, we're dead next turn to the air power. So, yeah, if I would have survived with the double pranksters. Yeah, I definitely should have just done that because you never know. But again, we would have been a little lucky because, yeah, it took them so long to find their third. And then if we survived that swing with chumps, we still would have needed a way to plug in the excess damage. So either way, they just swing with uh, what's in the air and they get lethal through that way. Uh, but we are going to play this out just in case. <laughs> Light Shield Array was beautiful, dude. Love the card. I uh, just got done playing with it in the Bunny Nuke build and it was good i love it it's it like it really is every time i played with it uh, i can't tell if the opponent is freezing up over there and maybe having to restart their client every now and then there's the full swing okay they block there block there chump there three gets through with the harbin i could i could have survived i probably could have if i would have just played prankster instead blocked in the air but then we still would like i said we still would have needed that damage through that we were still in trouble uh this is a little bit of a flood too isn't it a little bit of a flood this game let's let's count because we have 20 lands in here maybe we want to talk about going down to 19 lands probably not there's going to be a lot of moments where you want to get to your fourth mana do multiple things on the same turn of course right of course, uh, yeah, even five mana doing like three uh, spells on the same turn and a build like this is going to be essential to you. Let's give it a count real quick. We got Sea Chrome Coast. That's one. Power, that's two. Island, that's three. Uh, underground River, that's four. So four in the grave. We had Abandoned Mire, uh, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There were only eight land remaining. Although we did a lot of digging through the deck in that game. 29 cards remaining in the deck, 8 of them being lands. Yeah, we could probably consider 19 land, but hey, there we go. Getting the quest done. Guys, we're 38 minutes in. I'm going to try to push it just a little bit. I, I really shouldn't. We should just go over the, the build, but I feel like we have the potential of really fast games with this one anyways. I feel like we have uh, some serious power packed in. Uh, a serious amount of explosion, too. All right, we go first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is great. This is a good hand. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Probably right into Picklock Prankster, right? Do I play around a counter spell this time, guys? <laughs> uh, you know what? I am. I'm going to do it on my turn before the opponent's just like, by the way, I'm a teamer build. Uh, say hello to my make disappear. <laughs> Okay. Okay, Copper, Lion Gorge, Bitter Reunion. Sweet. Oh, wow. Only seeing land off the prankster? 
Oh no, guys, look at all these three mana cards in my hand. <laughs> oh no. Okay, consider, like, that's not bad, I guess. Let's see if we find a land over the prankster. Yeah, we just, like, do this on our turn, too, because, yeah, we want to find a land. Duress. Crap. Okay, yeah, no, we should do that. We should see, we should peer into the opponent's hand. That's a tough decision, though. Throne. Wow, I kind of feel mean right now. I just, I just took the fun out of the opponent's hand. <laughs> They do get to filter out some of this land, which is going to be huge for them. And they might as well do it on their turn in case they find Epic here number two as well. Yep, they're going for it. Cool. Recommission, guys. This is bad. That was. I feel like this is a great first hand. But like this... This is really bad right now. I, again, maybe unlucky, right? It could very well be how I put the uh, list together to you. And my variation to the uh, suggested list over on Discord. Maybe my variation. I'm going to go for that block, dude. I don't know what... I guess it could be removal, but then we just go recommission on our prankster at the very least. Hey, there's the third. All right, we got to go, bro. We got to get stuff down. But, like, what? Adi Jin? Start swinging in the air? Adi Jin first, since our main, like, if Monastery Mentor is our only other thing, yeah, wait, hold on, first of all, I should have swung with my Vigilant Creature first, uh, second of all, what I'm getting at here is, when Mentor is on the board, we want to be able to spam out as many of these sorceries and instances as possible, go nice and wide, right, but with Recommission being our only other thing, Right into Trumpeting Connoisseur, dude. Oh, buddy, oh, buddy. We're in trouble. Uh, the Scout, probably not the best hit for them. <laughs> uh, so that's good news, at least. So it's probably Halo Forager. Instead of keeping protection open with Shore Up, we just go ahead and go take this action. X is one. Now we're making the hottie Jin a little weaker, though. So do I go consider instead of duress? Yeah, I'll go consider. We should have swung first, though. Mentor. Yeah, no, we'll send that to the grave. Helping hand. Okay. <laughs> We're in trouble. If we lose by one, it was my fault for not swinging with the hottie Jin first. Uh, the initial concept there was, oh yeah, anything we do in this deck obviously buffs our board state because we're sending more stuff to the grave. But no, Halo Forager exiles it out of the grave anyways, so... Um, we do have good blockers, I suppose. Dinosaur, dinosaur, and both of those they called. Any removal and we just start packing stuff back from the grave and we start with Monastery Mentor. Go for the swing. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, we probably take the seven and block here, right? Down to eight. Anyone's game, easily. Look at this. The Battle of Jank, dude. I love this. Love that we're going up against the throne build right now. Gallywag's going to get them that treasure token at their end step. So we start with whatever we want to block with is recommissioned. Helping hand is whatever we want to keep on the board because it'll be tapped. Of course, we can untap it with shore up in case of an emergency. Who endures on a land? Luckily, we have that one island. Oh, that's good. Yeah, who endures also can hit basic land types, so Rafine's Tower can be grabbed, too. Mana fixing. Let's go. Thank you, opponent. <laughs> All right, consider. We got to get around the trample. Potential removal from the opponent we got to get around, too. So keeping shore up is going to be fine. While the recommission is one mana, we should do the one mana. Bring back the mentor. 
at this point, we don't want to play mentor number two. We want to do as much as possible here. So we start with consider, see if we can get another creature into the grave to hit off the other recommission and then keep the shore up open or the helping hand too, but. Oh, oh, <laughs> I suppose. I suppose recommission again, while it's one mana, we should do it, right? Take one down to seven. Going wide, doing a thing. And we'll have shore up as protection and a way to untap the other djinn if we are in desperate need of more blockers. And with everything. Also, Vigilance on Prankster uh, keeps it as a valuable blocker. Very nice, dude. Very nice. Opponents down to nine. Anyone's game, depending on how much, like, like I wonder if they have board wipes packed in. Yeah, dude, actually a board wipe would be really bad. <laughs> We'd lose everything, dude. And then helping hand is like the only thing. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the board wipes that would be in this build like burned on the house wouldn't hit their connoisseur, so we would just lose anyways. We'd have to, I guess, get the 5-5 five, five hottie gin to a 6-6. Six, six. Gish, uh, uh, wait, yeah. Gish hath? Gish hath. <laughs> something like that <laughs> i pronounced it different every time dude we're in serious trouble holy cow man um so we have to stop the trampling regardless you tore up the gin right ow my face So how do we want to do this? Trade, trade, take the ones, go here, right? Take out Gishath, make sure no damage gets through. I guess take out this board state. Nah, never mind. We can uh we can let them keep that because they have nothing else, and we want to make sure we have as many prowess monks on the board as possible to win next turn. Because we have three here, and then we need six from the monks. So we go helping hand. Oh, we got to keep the mentor anyways. Dude, nice. Body gin. Buff this board state. Cool swing. Thank you for letting me play this out, opponent. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, dude. The Battle of Jank. That was sick. That was a great last one. 47 minutes in, guys. Let's go over this build one more time. Great suggestion. Thank you so much again. Uh, very fun. Like I said, we don't get to play with a lot of these cards, so this was just a freaking blast. Yeah, I don't I don't get to play with a lot of like Demir style decks um, in general, and Esper falls under that category. Uh, right up my alley though. Awesome, awesome. Just exactly what you want from like that spell slinger style of thing where you're just like casting things, and then those things help you cast other things, and then that stocks your graveyard so then you cast things back from your graveyard <laughs> so yeah it's, it's like it's really fun um what could we do to make it a little bit more optimized uh i, I do think if you go up more dual lands it is going to hold you back a little bit because i've been running into incredibly powerful aggro decks that just slam damage through so when it comes time and it's like hey I got the mana for my hottie gen. Let's go. And you take two damage to play your hottie gen <laughs> just for your blue sources or something. Uh, like that, that could potentially be enough to get you out of the game one turn too soon. Uh, that's why I opted for less pain lands. Of course, it's still very important to mana fix, especially when you're looking this greedy over here uh, on this side of things, which is making sure we had that early blue source for things like consider and sight of hand all that worked out really nicely uh then just the extra dual land we did we attack with a restless today i don't think so but i do think there's going to be moments where of course the restless lands go a long way uh the extra the extra utility lands did they do a thing today no not really they just acted as land too right so there, there's some things to consider for the mana base to say the least duress hit its mark it's no wonder we're seeing more people play with this dude like every now and then duress pops up in standard and you're just like huh huh that really did a thing <laughs> that, 
that was terrific for the opponent or you know what i mean so yeah no it felt good in here i like this and it hit its mark today that was excellent recommission was sweet helping hand didn't do as much as recommission did it but i still think having more of the one mana ones is still going to be better than more of the two mana ones but maybe we want to consider like three helping hands three recommissions instead right actually there's also now there's also one that's yeah can't stay away has that flashback sorcery speed return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield it gains if this creature would die exile it instead so like recommission is just like better right because even though this has flashback how often are you going to need to flash it back for five recommission is just like also have a counter <laughs> and then you don't got to worry about flashing it back because yeah how often would you have to flash back for five yeah i thought i thought about that and then also um just having the orzov colors up there is a little bit more greedy too based on the fact that this is a three color deck as well so yeah okay what else do we want to consider uh, the Malcolm didn't do as much as I thought, but there were moments where we were like, oh yeah, Malcolm on this board state will do a lot. Um, and then we kind of struggled to keep it onto the board state. We didn't get to attack with this a single time, even though we drew it in a lot of those games. Prankster was good. Yeah, no, I wouldn't drop the Pranks. The four Prankster was excellent, huh? Like the moment of truth. Do we want to drop the go for the throat for another bitter triumph? I guess so, I suppose. But I also like, there's... Yeah, I, that's situational. It depends what you're seeing. It does. But there were plenty of games where we were struggling to actually get these three mana cards into the grave. Off of the mills, we were just like... <laughs> we were just hitting a bunch of lands off of the mills and stuff like that. So a bitter triumph, the discard, onto one of these three drops could be huge. So maybe we just want three of those instead. Which I That might be the number that they had in the Discord suggestion as well. Uh, outside of that... What did you guys think? I had a blast with this one. Uh, thank you again for the suggestion. If you guys made it this far into the video for real y'all are champions, don't forget we got that Discord link down in the description. And also we have that Patreon link down there too. Uh, if you want to support the channel that way. Yeah, guys, thanks again for being here. Um, let me know for sure down in the comments, what would you add or take out? And I will see you in the next video.